Hey, I'm Mike with woodshopmike.com, and today I'm going to show you how I built this outfeed table. It doubles for assembly, has downdraft sanding, and tons of storage that anyone can use in the shop. So let's get to the build. To start off, I break down these 4x8 sheets into more manageable pieces to cut on the table saw later. I'm using a piece of scrap MDF as a straight edge, and I've set the 4x8 sheet on some 2x4s to bring it up off the concrete. Using my cordless circular saw makes pretty quick work of this step. Heading over to the table saw, I get my distance from the blade set and start ripping the pieces that will become the internal members or the grid work for my torsion box top. Once everything's assembled, this is going to be a really flat surface. Here I'm cutting these pieces to various lengths depending on their location in the grid. We'll come back to these in a little while. I made the template to keep my hole sizing and spacing consistent. I start out this process by pre-drilling with a 3 quarter inch spade bit and I vacuum up all the chips and I take a couple of passes with my plunge router using a flush trim bit. This first pass is to hog out the majority of the material. After vacuuming up the chips, I go back for a second pass, really making sure to follow my template. I double check everything with a piece of scrap, remove the template, and then repeat this process to cut through the bottom layer of the material. Rough cut, vacuum, finish cut, vacuum, double check with scrap, and move on. Now I'll add a good layer of paste wax to help keep glue from adhering to the surface while I'm assembling the grid for the torsion box. The first step in assembling this grid is to put together the four outer pieces that make up the frame. So once the corners are assembled and squared, I clamp them to the workbench to make sure they don't move. I use spacer blocks to set the distance of these longer intermediate pieces, and then I use shorter intermediate pieces that are the same distance as the spacer blocks to start laying out everything. Now refer to the plans for the exact placement of all these pieces in the grid. As you see here, the grid has to align pretty closely with those holes that are in the top and bottom sheets of the MDF. So I would recommend that you double check all the measurements and cuts before you get to this section just to make sure you don't run into any surprises. I attach the top and bottom layers of MDF with a whole bunch of brad nails spaced about 8 inches apart. At this point, make sure that the torsion box is oriented with the top up. I pre-drill holes with a countersink bit about every 12 inches along each one of the internal intermediates. Then I'd follow up with drywall screws and sand down the surface. I've made a special stop block to set the distance and hold these pieces of conduit through the cut. Without a way to securely hold the conduit in place, they actually just end up getting grabbed by the blade and chewed up. It's kind of scary too. At this point, the torsion box is flipped with the bottom facing up. I'm installing the conduit from the underside, leaving it just shy of the top surface. Next, I apply a bead of PVC rated construction adhesive and smooth it out to hold these pieces in place. Here I'm using a large router bit to flush cut the top with the side of the torsion box frame. Now, I'm taking a full width pass with this router bit, so if this isn't something you're comfortable with, take more than just one pass. For my build, I've opted to add some hardwood trim to the torsion box just for a little bit extra durability. With glue and brads, I secured in place temporarily. Then I add a series of drywall screws about two feet apart just for some extra security. Now you can use biscuits or pocket hole joinery to put this project together. Just check out the plans and the blog post for further details. The footage of putting the case together actually got corrupted, but that process is explained well in the blog post, so head over there if you need some direction. Now here I'm installing the tow kick and I had some extra construction adhesive left over, so for good measure, I'd slap some of that on the top and then drive it home with more brad nails. Here I'm adding some extra blocking to hold a threaded insert. Now this is going to hold a carriage bolt that will act as a leveler for the cabinet. This will allow me to adjust the height and make sure that things are in line with my table saw surface. I install the threaded insert and then add a nut to the carriage bolt to act as a lock. Run the carriage bolt home and you're good to go. Now it's time to move on to assembling the frame for the downdraft sanding plenum. Glue and brads are the name of the game again, making sure that the edges are squared up before I continue. At the drill press I use a fly cutter to cut this 4 inch opening for the ducting in the bottom of the plenum. Also, it makes a pretty good frisbee. I lay out this piece in the center of the plenum, and with glue and brads I secure it in place. An extra set of hands to hold the baffle in place while you glue in the supports is a good idea. Next, flip the plenum over, add a little bit more construction adhesive, and throw some staples in there for good measure. I recommend hitting all the seams in the plenum with HVAC sealant to cut down on leaks. 
Now it's time to install a plenum into the case of the cabinet. I'm using clamps to temporarily hold it in place and keep everything nice and square. I'm pre-drilling and countersinking some holes to drive drywall screws into that'll hold the plenum in place. Now, if you want, you can drive these screws from the inside of the cabinet instead of the outside of the cabinet, but either way it works just fine. All I need to do to secure the tabletop to the cabinet base is run a handful of screws through the stretchers. I sand the hardwood trim around the tabletop up to 120 grit. That's perfectly fine for shop furniture. Now a flywheel cutter is not really intended to be used in a hand drill, but I'm using this more as a template or layout rather than to actually cut all the way through. I finished cutting the access hole for the dust collector hose with my jigsaw. Now make sure you turn it to super high speed so you can be cool and get through this real quick. So the funny thing about needing to build an outfeed table is that I needed the outfeed table for the rest of the project. So next up I start cutting all the pieces for the drawer boxes. These sheets are being cut to the width and depth of the drawer boxes, minus any of the joinery that I use. And this next series of cuts is not what you would call by the book. Uh, cutting with a short edge against the fence instead of a long edge can uh, be a recipe for kickback, so if you're uncomfortable with this approach, use a crosscut sled. The first series of cuts that I make in these drawer box pieces is the dado that will accept the bottom panel for the drawers. The next dado that I'm going to cut is on the drawer box sides, and this is going to accept the rabbit that will be in the front pieces of the drawer box. Since I don't have a dado stack for this saw, I have to make these cuts in a series of passes, but that's alright, the end result is still just fine. This is the first of two cuts to form the rabbit on the front and back of the drawer box. If you stand the piece upright against the table saw and make sure you apply even pressure, you won't have a problem with the piece rocking. If you set the fence and blade just right, you won't have to move anything to make this second pass to form the rabbit in the front and back pieces of the drawer box. So this is the first time you're going to be really glad that you have an outfeed table instead of an outfeed roller. Here I'm ripping down a quarter inch sheet of Luon to make the drawer box bottoms. Now while I'm cross cutting this Luon, the skinny edge of the sheet is against the fence. If you're not comfortable with this cutting technique, make sure you use a cross cut sled. It's box making time. Alright, so what we do is we add a little bit of glue into the dados and we tap the sides into those dados. Then a little bit more glue in the dados for the back is all we need to finish the pre-assembly of this drawer box. Now I'm going to slide it into this squaring jig that I made with some scrap MDF double check the box for square and then I'm going to secure it with some 18 gauge brads. Now these are one and a half inches long but you can get away with a little shorter if that's what you have on hand. Once all the boxes are assembled it's time to start installing the drawer glides in the cabinet. This drawer slide jig by Craig makes the process pretty easy. I set the slide on top of the jig, add the screws in the proper locations and then repeat around the rest of the cabinet. I set the first drawer box on a sheet of quarter inch luon in the base of the cabinet. This prevents the bottom of the drawer box from dragging on the cabinet while the drawer is open and closed. Pull the skinny portion of the drawer slide out until it's flush with the front of the drawer box. Throw a screw into the first hole on the left and right side of the drawer box and then pull the drawer box out until you can get to the last hole. Make sure that you're pushing down evenly so that everything stays nice and flat. Now it's time to put the drawer fronts onto the drawer boxes. I went ahead and pre-drilled holes in the drawer fronts on the drill press to make sure things were nice and consistent. And I'm using a scrap piece of quarter inch Luon to set my spacing from one drawer front to the next. Yeah, that's going to look pretty good. I was originally going to use a dado to put the shelf in place, but this jig for drilling shelf pins is just so easy to use, I decided to go that route instead. Just drill the first hole, install the locating pin, and then follow it up by drilling holes in the other five locations. The stop collar on the drill bit makes sure that you don't go all the way through your sheet of plywood. To drill the holes in the back of the cabinet, I had to take off the front edge support. But after that, the process is the same. Drill the bottom hole, put in the pin, and then drill the subsequent holes. It's that easy. With the shelf pins installed, I'm ready to add the shelf and move on to the next part of this project. To install the hinges in my cabinet, I use this jig by Craig for drilling the hole for concealed hinges. Now this is an easy jig to use. You just drill until the stop collar hits, remove the drill bit, and then drill through your pilot holes. Remove the jig, knock out all the chips, and drop your hinge in place. After that, just add your screws and call it done.
The next thing to do is install the doors. I make all of my measurements from one hinge to the next and transfer everything into the cabinet. I install the doors based on my layout marks with two screws into each hinge. And there's lots of adjustability in these hinges in case I didn't get everything right. I'm finishing off this project with a couple of coats of general finishes and durourethane. This will add some protection from inevitable glue up spills and who knows what else. Well that wraps up this project. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the list of links below for my blog post, plans, and all the items and materials I used during this build. A special shout out goes to Home Depot and Clingsport Woodworking Shop for sponsoring this project. And until next time, have fun making something.